Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we are continuing our VGC Series 8 content featuring another rental team from you fine people that have provided them and big shout out to everyone that has. And if you do have rental teams you'd like to see featured on the channel, just drop them down in the comment section below and I will at some point get around to playing them. So this team today is from Zigbear, uh, who provided this a little while ago. Um, it's a very interesting interesting team it's got a big take on the old kind of sand cores in the formats that we've had previously but you're tagging in Zamazenta here to have a little bit of support a, a bit of a support role a bit of an offensive role as a restricted Pokemon on this team you've got the trick room switch there which works really nicely alongside the Tyranitar uh, you've got the support obviously with the Zamazenta it's got the wide god the coaching to boost things like Tyranitar Excadrill uh, you've got the redirection there on the Togekiss and then you've got Zapdos as well just to kind of give a little bit stability to the team give another uh, ground resist that you're going to need with three ground weak Pokemon on your team but you've got ways to deal with those ground threats you know you've got the tap the Porygon 2 that's an incredibly good effective means of dealing with something like Landorus that could be a bit of a problem and then the Togekiss is going to be very instrumental with its redirection and also the the ability to kind of shut things down with yawn and protect and then the air slash there is really nice to help deal with things like Urshifu that could be also quite like problematic at anyway here's a rental for today's team hope you enjoyed today's episode we'll jump in have a couple of games as always and then i'll throw the rental up at the end once we've had uh, those games so without further ado friends let's jump into it today and uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode <laughs> First up today, we have a team of Nihiliga Whimsicott, Rotom Wash, Incineroar, Zacian, and Galarian Moltres. So, a very interesting team. Got lots of options of speed control here. You got Trick Room options on the Nihiliga. You got Tailwind options on that Whimsicott. So, both kind of sides of the spectrum, speed control wise, going to make it difficult for us to kind of position and get into good spots with the team. We've got to keep that in mind as well and how we can kind of get around that. Zacian is going to be a big player for my opponent. Um, and not having kind of intimidate from our side of the field makes it a little bit more tricky along with that Galarian Moltres it could potentially have something like Nasty Plot and set up now the Incineroar as well with the Intimidate makes it difficult for our kind of uh, more physical attackers to get going in this but I think we've got a good uh, we've got a lot of means to be able to do good damage to my opponent you know we've got I think Zapdos and Excadrill could not could maybe be a decent uh, lead for us in all honesty because I could see my opponent potentially leading with the Nihiligo here to kind of counter counter play the Zapdos uh, definitely the Whimsicott as well but Zapdos is going to be a big player I think because it deals with the Zacian pretty well with the Max Flare it can deal with the um, Galarian Moltres as well pretty well not too concerned about something like the Rotom and, and can deal with most things pretty well so I think uh, we'll bring Tyranitar and yeah let's go Zamazenta we may as well may as well go Zamazenta in this one my opponent really hasn't got any ground threats that we need to be too concerned about either so it gives us a little bit of an easier time with our ground weak Pokemon where we can kind of bring them and not have to worry too much we do obviously have a lot of uh, fighting weakness in our team so that's something we have to keep in mind obviously with the the Zacian being there going to be probably the number one thing that we want to try and get rid of as soon as possible uh, now we are seeing uh, the Incineral and the Zassian come out from my opponent. But it's, again, it's not too bad because we do have the option where we can max with Zapdos, probably go for an Airstream into the Incineral. We could potentially go for uh, a Max Flare as well into the, the Zacian and get the um, the Sunset up as well, which could be a nice option here. Um, and we could potentially switch into Zamazenta as well and get the Speed Boost. Hmm. Which might not be bad for the late game, you know? I think going for an Airstream now and switching into Zamazenta is actually not a bad play. Now, we, the, the, the big issue here would be taking like a close combat or a secret sword off the opposing Zacian. But if we can get our Zamazenta with a bit of speed control, it helps us out to no end because we're going to be able to take down the Incineroar the next turn with a, um, a close combat or a sacred sword, whatever, whichever one this Zamazenta's got. And then we're going to be in a position to get our Max Flare off onto the Zacian this next turn. So uh, by going for the Airstream now, it kind of gets the chip damage we need onto the, the, the Incineroar to make sure that we can pressure that KO the next turn. Um, 
and it also gives us a jump on the Zassian the next turn, which is also the, the thing that we need to be able to do because being slower than Zassian is never going to be a great thing. As a fake out, if we see a substitute, it's not ideal, but it's manageable. Yeah. It's manageable. It's not ideal, but it's manageable. And there's the airstream. This is what we want onto the, the NC. Yeah, and that's more than enough that we need. Okay. So we may see the Incineroar switch out this next turn, potentially. But the airstream there is useful. Now we can go for... Now what's my opponent going to bring in? Have they got anything that's going to come in? There's not really anything other than the Whimsicott that could potentially come in and cause us a lot of issues like and, and take the the close combat pretty well um the other option is of course gone for coaching into zapdos but we may end up losing zamazenta here i mean if we lose zamazenta here to like a sacred sword or a close combat from my opponent then it means that they're not gonna have the substitute they're not got the protection going into the next turn so it does allow us a little bit of uh, a little bit more pressure to pick up the knockout onto them the next turn. So it's, it'd be interesting to see what they go for here. Uh, Max Flare coming out. So we'll get the sun set up. We've just got to be mindful about when we bring our Tyranitar onto the field now because we kind of need the sun boost to get the Zassian with Zapdos. Okay, so the sub fade in. Do they go for sub again? Because they may, they may choose to go down that route. We do get the Incineral, which is always good. Removing that from the field. The Behemoth Blade coming out. Now this might... No, this shouldn't... No, this won't pick up the knockout. Oh, it's onto Zapdos. Okay. Damn, it does so much damage. But now they've lost their substitute. It's kind of like a risk game there where they've played. They're trying to get damage onto the Zapdos, which is fair enough. You know, it's really good damage. Zapdos is in a bit more of a vulnerable position now, depending on what comes in, especially when it's something like the Nihiligo. Has it got the Sash? I don't think so. Behemoth Bash going to be able to pick up the knockout there. We go for the Max Flare and the Behemoth Bash. The only issue would be if we see the Nihiligo Max here. And that would be a problem for us. But then again, they have to then protect the Zacian, And we still have Tyranitar and Excadrill to come in from the back, which pressure both of these Pokemon pretty hard. Uh, I'm going to go for the Behemoth Bash. It's going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto the Nihiligo for sure. We've not been intimidated. They are maxing. But at the same time, do they protect? They have to protect the Zacian. It's, the slowest, it's slower than both of our threats. Uh, and if they set the sand up, it means, you know... I mean, they're going to take a Behemoth Bash, regardless. Yeah. So let's see. They've got to protect, right? They've got to protect. Got to protect. Yeah, got to protect. That's a, that's a kicker there, where we could have potentially doubled into the Nihiligo just to guarantee that we get the knockout onto it here. Let's see what a Behemoth Bash does. I'm interested to see the damage done to the Nihiligo. Obviously, Max, it's going to be able to take it, but you never know. Bosh! In one, Zamazenta is the king. Oh, okay, I feel, oh, come on. I ruined my glory with that crit. <laughs> well, that pretty much locks up the game for us, to be honest. So that's a little bit unfortunate that we get the crit there, but I mean, Z Zamazenta kind of enforcing its dominance here onto the, the battlefield, just saying, yeah, I'm the, I'm the best dog. So, uh, come on take me out so he's got two knockouts so far can we make it three and i uh the rod i'm coming out potentially we could yeah definitely i think heat wave and then heat wave we'll get the zassian um and then we're going to be able to probably go for just a close combat into the uh the rotom it could nasty plot but i mean we got the speed advantage we still got tyranitar we still got excadrill in the back we're sitting in a really good position to kind of close this game up so we're not in a bad spot the critical hit there was huge for us because in other you know really when we look at like um how it would affect the game we would lose zapdos in that situation but the sand the sand stream would be up so then we get the free switch into excadrill for the zapdos we've got the coaching that we can take advantage of so I don't think we'd be in a bad spot at all. And, you know, like Tyranitar going to be able to deal with Rotom pretty well uh, in the sand, at least with that boost, if we're not talking about Nasty Pop boost. And still Excadrill alongside it as well. So um, it's a shame that we're not going to be able to see that combination. We still might. You never know. Uh, but we'll see what this Rotom goes for. It's probably going to go for um, when we get the burn as well. The Zapdos is on fire today. The Zapdos is doing all the things that we want it to be doing. So doing all the good stuff. Thunderbolt coming out into Zapdos. Yeah, picks up the knockout. But it does give us a free switch in to Excadrill if we want that. I think Excadrill is probably the play here to bring in. Then we can maybe coach in and um, 
Mm, with iron heads, it's not got rock slides, so we got sword stance. But I don't, I don't think we need it. I think we're we're kind of all right with the iron head and the close combat. Going to be enough to get the rotom and close this one up for us. Um, it's always tricky picking your excadrill set. Like the sword stance set is always the one to kind of go for. But we know close combat was going to be more than enough. And uh, Zamazenta getting pretty much every knockout here, other than the Zassian, and proving it's the uh, the top dog in that first one for us. Sorry for the pun. Sorry. Apologize. Anyway, good game to my opponent. Uh, really nice start for us as always. And uh, we'll jump into our next one right now. Okay, up next we've got Francesco. And they are playing a Shadow Calyrex, Ndidi, Urshifu, Reggie, Aleki, Landorus, Theorin, and Incineroar team. So and it's an interesting comp. Uh, you've got the Calyrex, obviously the Ndidi, the Urshifu kind of core there that you've seen throughout the series a do very well we featured it like in the first week uh, of the series it's one of my favorite calls no thunderous though that you kind of see commonly with those pokemon you've got the reggie Alecki instead it gives a different option of course with the uh, electro web kind of support there and just a faster option in general landorus theory going to be a big issue for us um and the incineral kind of gives us a few headaches i guess with the fake out support it can provide and intimidate support as well uh, Trick Room, honestly, if we can get Trick Room up um, with Tyranitar Porygon 2 on the field, we're in a really good spot, you know? And I, like, I don't, like, I don't think there's very much my opponent can do about that. The issue is dealing with things like Urshifu that are a little bit problematic to begin with. Now, Zamazenta can kind of come in and do a great job initially because it's got obviously got uh, white guard support which could be super useful for us and it also pressures the urshifu not so much the landorus the landorus is the biggest kind of annoyance for us i think what we'll do is go this this uh this and we'll go with zamazenta in the last slot i need to lock in we're running out of time talking too much about the team but it's all right it's all right we're going to get there, we're going to get there, and we're going to pick up another win, and uh, show that these rental teams that you guys are providing are solid rental teams, and uh, really fun to play as well, you know, it's always like, I really, like, I'm struggling in Series 8 at the minute, and I think it's because I know it's going to revert back to uh, Series 7 rules and Series 9 in a little over a month's time, and um, I just feel I'm really struggling to kind of motivate myself to play this format, because I'm just like, well, there's not really a progression to it. Just kind of taking a step back, and to me, that like it's just the de de deflates me a little bit, you know. But you guys sending your rental co teams in is amazing, it gives me a nice insight to see what you guys have been playing and how you kind of gone about things in the format. And you know, I really just enjoy playing these different teams, and uh, it makes things a lot easier for me to uh to do stuff, okay. Well, we're going to get the Trick Room up for sure. I think, you know, I think what we'll do is get Tyranitar onto the field right now and get a Trick Room set up, and we're going to be in a phenomenal spot. Now, the, the Landorus could decide to max here. Definitely. But it's not going to go max quick into Zapdos, unless they've got the most godlike of prediction skills that I've ever seen. And I just don't see it happening. So I think we're going to be safe getting Tyranitar in. They may go for max Rockfall. Uh, that would make sense. Um, expanding force not really going to be too much of an issue and I don't think I don't know they may go follow me here but I don't know don't know max airstream as well potentially come out but that'll bite my opponent and I can't see them going for it you know airstreaming in front of something like a Porygon 2 is never the most optimal kind of move to choice to go for when you know that the trick room is going to be the, the kind of the big thing that you'll probably see come out from them uh, okay. Well, this is not too bad. Landorus uh, maxing. What we're going to see? Where are you going, Landorus? Max Rockfall. There we go. It's still going to do a chunk of damage, you know. We're not going to can't avoid that. Um, still a very strong Pokemon and an expanding force, but we do get the Trick Room set up. And we it might be worth, you know, um, Max and P2. Yeah. Sound crazy, but. Uh, I don't know. I think Max and Tyranitar is probably the better play. I can't see a Max Quake taking us down. The big issue would be obviously Help and Hand Max Quake, which would be um, which would be the biggest kind of uh, issue for us. Um, are we going to be able to Ice Beam? I don't think so. Uh, we could lash out. I mean, hmm. 
We kind of need to remove the DD from the field before we can do anything else. I'm going to protect the Tyranitar this turn because I feel like you max quake and you help in hand max quake. That's the thing that I feel like you're going to go for. Um, no, they're just going to redirect and max quake. But regardless, anyway, they're going to be proccing our weakness policy, which makes us a bit more powerful the next turn. It gives us the opportunity to get an ice beam off into the, the DD, which does nothing. Helps us chip it down slightly, and another max rockfall. Not wanting to uh, to proc the um, not wanting to proc the weakness policy. Kind of scared to do it, I guess. Um, yeah, the helping hand puts me off. Going for that helping hand. Oh, max quick. If we had intimidate in the back, it would be it would be better. It would be better. They gotta redirect though with Ndidi, that's the thing. I think, you know, what we're gonna do is do this. Go Max, go Darkness. This is where they max Quake though, and this is where we could bring in Zapdos and reverse the Trick Room. Let's do that. Let's reverse the Trick Room. Keep it for later on. Stall these max turns out. They're going to max quick. They have to now because we've just protected. It's the most optimal play for them to go for. They don't go for their helping hand, which is surprising because I think you help in hand at this point. Yeah, max quick. We waste that and their max turns are done now. And we'll reverse the trick room. And Zapdos in a, a really good spot now. And we already kind of identified how like, useful Zapdos can be again in this in this battle because now we can airstream into the, the Landorus. Um... Once we get the airstream up, Zapdos in a in a, a, a great spot. Uh, I think what we'll do is just... Oh, did we recover? No, I don't think we do. I think the Ice Beam, Landris. I think we max and got airstream into the DD. Although we just got after Landris twice because, yeah, I think we got after the Landris. Like, likelihood is Landris is not going to be... Um, It's not going to have Protect, it's going to more likely have Assault Vest or um, another item, but I doubt it has Protect. So we're likely going to see the Follow Me here, which should be enough to get, it should be enough to get the Indeedee, and then the Ice Beam reverts onto the Landorus. Oh, now they go Help in Hand, what? <laughs> Alright, well, nothing makes sense to me anymore. We should get, uh, if it's Assault Vest, we don't get it. Yeah. But the rock slide isn't too much of an issue here for us anyway, so it's fine. The problem is the DD still sitting on the field, which I'm not a huge fan of. The rock slide doing decent enough damage there. Uh, but the P2 going to be able to finish the job off and get the Landorus out of the way. Um, Urshifu going to be a little bit of an issue for us, of course. Uh, and I would imagine it's lurking in the back. Especially with the redirection support, it's going to be a problem for us to, uh, to be able to take down comfortably anyway. So... Uh, all we're gonna have to do is just be mindful of how we're kind of positioning P2. Uh, oh, Calyrex coming in. Now that's mm, not ideal. Not ideal. But they can't really touch. The, uh, they can touch the P2 with an expanded force. That's the thing. And what we could potentially do is get Tyranitar onto the field. Are they gonna go for the expanded force? I think they probably do. I think they probably do go for expanded force. Um, where Max Lightning would have been the play, really, you know? Yeah, I think we Max Lightning. Yeah, we go Max Lightning and recover. Because we'll get the jump on the Calyrex, regardless. But we want to stop that boosted expanded force. Yeah, because I think that's what they're going for. I don't think you go Astro Barrage here. You may do. May do, but I don't think you do. I think because this, the psychic terrain's up, it makes more sense. Wow, they don't even. Yeah, they're helping hand there. It's 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 a dangerous game, and I mean the crits, unfortunate for my opponent, but it's a dangerous game going for the helping hand when you know. Oh, they do astro barrage, so P two gonna stick around. Zapdos, no, 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 no. But we do. Oh, yeah, this is the issue now. Uh, it's not so much of an issue, is it? I mean, if even if Urshifu's in the back, we've still got Zamazenta to come in. Zamazenta hard walls, anything like 
uh, Shifu that could be lurking in the back. So uh, yeah, we're not we're not in too much danger. And with the the psychic terrain gone, it's kind of all right. So um, we'll see. I think we're doing pretty well. P2 Zapdos just shown how how good they are. The sandstorm retracts, so no more sandstorm. But it's time for Zamazenta to come in and clean up this mess. Here we go. Regilecki coming in. Oh, no. <laughs> not the best. Not the best. Not the best. Not the Pokemon we want to be seeing here, honestly. But it's all right. It's it's still all right because um, we're going to be able to just trick room and then deal with the Regilecki from there. Uh, so we will do that. Uh, oh, we've got no protect. got no protect. Got no protect, man. Uh, huh. There's no point of white guard, and I don't think the electro web. Um, yeah, we trick room regardless. I think uh, let's try. Oh, they're just gonna they're gonna help in hand and nuke Zamazenta, I reckon. Let's go for Behemoth Bash into DD. Yeah, I mean they could help in. Oh, they do go electro web. Weird. Weird when we've got Trick Room. I don't think it's the optimal thing to do. Uh, one little bit, um, in all honesty. I'm surprised to see the Regilecki, but again, not so surprised. Because I guess the concept of our team, we have got like a lot of things that would struggle to uh, to deal with Regilecki in the late game, you know. Behemoth Bash, not enough to take it down. But the, the reason there for going for that over the close combat is... Um, we don't get the defense drops, which means we're not taking as much damage from attacks. Um, but the trick room going up, which is great. We're going to be able to ice beam the DD and then just go for, I guess, go for the cloth combat now into um, the Regieleki because it is uh, going to hit it a bit harder. And the Behemoth Bash is resisted because of that electric typing. Um, and there's the battle cancelled. So, very good game to my opponent and two great games for us with this team today. And, uh, you know... I think the team has just performed extremely well. I need to remind myself of the user. So Zigbear, thank you so much once again, my friend, for the uh, for the team, the rental. It's been a pleasure playing it, and it's a really refreshing team to kind of play. I know it's got combinations that are very popular and have been throughout the trend of Sword and Shield, uh, throughout the different series that we've had, you know, the, the Tyranitar Excadrill, the Togekiss, but uh, the Zapdos as well. But putting them all together and making them work is a different story, and I think it's a really good example of how you can do that and don't be scared of trying different things that have worked in previous formats and trying to adapt them into this new one because as you can see with this team it works great and uh, it's a very strong and powerful team and it's not something that I would like to go up against too often anyway so we'll jump over now remind you of the rental for today's team okay friends here is Zigbear's rental team for Zamazenta Sand and it's an incredible team hope you've enjoyed today's episode I have had an absolute blast playing the team today and I think it's going to be one of those teams that I'll play a lot more of as you probably know if you've watched the channel for a long time Tyranitar is my all time favourite Pokemon um, so just playing that with the sand element with Excadrill as well and Zapdos in there I mean it feels like it's built for me <laughs> it's perfect honestly it's got everything that I love in it and the Zamazenta really performs very well in the team as well so I do love this team a lot it's, uh, it's definitely up there with one of my favourite rental teams that we've featured and uh, I really do appreciate Zigbear for, for throwing this out here and everyone else that's uh, contributed with their rental team it's been a lot of fun like I say and really rejuvenated my love for series 8 and the kind of back end uh, towards the end of this series so thank you so much to all of you and uh, thank you all for tuning in and watching I hope you're enjoying these as much as I am playing these um, and uh, we'll wrap things up there if you do try the rental out leave a comment down below let me know what your thoughts are on the team and uh, we'll see you all for another episode very soon thank you so much friends for tuning in as always supporting the channel and doing all that I do love making this sort of content I love making videos and especially on Pokemon. It's really nice being able to share this stuff with you. A uh, bit of an odd tangent to end the episode on, but I just want to push across my appreciation because I probably don't do it enough and I need to because I do appreciate each and every one of you that comes out and views these videos and enjoys them. And if you get any enjoyment out of them, any benefit out of them, then that my job's done. That's the thing. So have a great rest of your day, whatever you're up to. Take care of yourself more importantly than anything else. And I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.